My name is Colin Durant. I would like to say, Mike, you have been an inspiration my whole life. And I came from a humble island of Trinidad and Tobago, and then I was raised in Brooklyn, New York. And during the 90s, Brooklyn was crazy. And when I first came to Brooklyn, my cousin and I, we used to always watch you fight in like 87 in the early 90s. And my cousin was like, out here, you gotta be like Mike. You know, out here is monsters and victims. In the Durant family, we're not gonna be victims. We're gonna be monsters. So I became a very good fighter. And of course, growing up that time, it was very dangerous. So I had to physically fight. And that fighting took me to, you know what? I don't wanna be in the streets fighting. So I ended up joining the military and I went to the Navy. And I was a Navy corpsman, and I became, you know, with the Navy corpsman, it was like, oh, you're going to Navy, you're going to be fine. I didn't know Navy corpsmen go with the Marine Corps. So I got <laughs> attached to the Marine Corps. I saw a few Marines in here, so oorah, simplify. And I continued to be a fighter. And, you know, when I got out the military, I was still kind of a fighter, and I was, you know, somebody say something to me, I punch him in the face, because I learned that from you, I learned that from my pops. <laughs> you know, ain't no, ain't no, ain't, you know, I'm not, I've, not, I've never been a bully, but if you bullied my friends, or you bullied me, I made sure you never wanted to fight me again, and that was me, you know, in my neighborhood, I was the man in Flatbush. But then, older Mike started inspiring me, because one day I watched an interview with you, and it was like, you have to understand how much violence it took to become this peaceful. And I started saying, man, I got I to gotta become like this. And then I, I started doing marketing and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? But now I'm in that transition where I'm just trying to be humble like you. Because, you know, when you fight all your life, people don't know it. I still stand up straight. I stand up proud. But everything hurts now. <laughs> you know, everything yeah. hurts. I wake up, my feet hurt, my ankles. And I'm just like, you know, how, how do you deal with that when you know I have three sisters? And Pat, you know how you say you defend your family. Brooklyn, New York, is 3,000 murders. This guy's harassing girls, whatever. Nobody touched my sisters growing up, you know. And I got my brother here who's also a veteran. And it's like, how do you, how do you go through every day knowing, like, man, I can't, I can't physically harm nobody anymore, but I still, I still want to be a monster somehow. Hey, you know... About that fighting stuff, you're only as good as your last adversity. You know, um, sure, how do you say? All that um, anger, fighting for your friends is because you want love. Definitely. Yeah, that's because, that's why I fight for my friends as well. And there's nothing wrong because self-love is very distant to some people. We don't understand it. I don't know. We think it's um, self, <clears throat> me, self-love is like, Buying a new car mm -hmm. or buying clothes. Now, um, self-love is about, <clears throat> wow, buying somebody else clothes. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, it's helping other people, self-love. And you, um, and this is what, since you talk about humbleness, you have to um, love everybody else in order to love yourself. And that's what I learned and, uh, in life. I just believe in me. And um, I'm going to overcome all my adversities. I'm not going to, you know, it's like this. The truth uh, sets you free, but it's going to make you miserable first. And, and um, that's how... That's how I live my life. Michael, I, tell, I tell the truth, and then I say, fuck, I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, is it more loving out first, then in, or is it loving in first, then out? Well, you have to understand the definition of self-love or love, you know? We don't understand that only um, through our parents. And sometimes our parents don't understand the process of love or self-love. So we have, to, um, we have to journey, and we have to be searchers. And once you're a seeker, um, it just never stops. You never stop learning to the, day, to the end of time. It's too much, it's too much history for us to, um, I don't know, consume in our lifetime.